heaven rejoice and earth be glad, let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land, Hosanna to our King. Sound the trumpet into the night, the day of the Lord is near. Wake your people, lift your voice, proclaim it to the world. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad, let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land, Hosanna to our King. Rise in splendor, shake off your sleep, put on your robes of joy. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad, let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land, Hosanna to our King. Raise your voices, be not afraid, proclaim it in every land. Christ has died, but he has risen, he will come again. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad, let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every man, Hosanna to our King. Let children proclaim through every Sunday of Easter. For the Mass intention for today, for three very important people, for you, our prisoners, and for all who are seeing and being part of this Mass. Secondly, we want to pray for, in the intentions, the victims who were killed in the Nova Scotia shooting this week, and we want to pray for their families. And also for all frontline workers and all those in long-term care homes and the staff. Brothers and sisters, as we acknowledge our sins, prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we will look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day 
of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First readings from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourself know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and the foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show me the path of life. Lord, you will show me the path of life. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. Lord, you will show me the path of life. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Lord, you will show me the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let your faithful one see the pit. Lord, you will show me the path of life. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Lord, you will show me the path of life. A reading from 1 Peter 1. Beloved, if you invoke as Father the one who judges each person impartially according to each one's deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. Christ was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometers from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And, they, and he said to them, 
What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. One of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place the, there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it as just as women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and he gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. These were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the third Sunday, of Easter, we celebrate and we pray with heavy hearts. We have heavy hearts because our brothers and sisters in Nova Scotia are hurting very much. We have lost our fellow Canadians to a very sad and tragic tragedy. Very sad. And really, it's very difficult for us. I think all of us are in shock still about what happened to those good people in Nova Scotia. And I think it's pretty hard to put into words how we feel. Where was God? Why didn't God stop it? Why were these people killed? Why didn't the government help with a more awareness? Well, we don't have all the answers. And we don't know why God didn't intervene. But we do know a few things. And really the gospel, my brothers and sisters, actually helps us with this tragedy. We see in the gospel that these uh, Cleopas, and we think it could have been his wife, were going back to Emmaus, a military town, we believe. And they heard about the resurrection, but they didn't see it. So they were thinking more about uh, the passion, the death, the uh, suffering of Jesus. And they were troubled. They were troubled and they didn't know what to think. Again, they didn't have the answers like we do today with this great tragedy in Nova Scotia. But we do know that Jesus walked with them. 
And what we do know, that maybe even Jesus was thinking, when they were sharing with him, maybe he was reminiscing about all the suffering that he'd gone through. And it might have been very hard for him, I know it was hard for them, but they had lost someone that they looked so much to, for guidance, for love, and for support. But we see that this road to Emmaus, it's one of the most powerful, beautiful stories in the gospel, teaches us and helps us to know that in Easter, that life itself is actually a journey. That the parameters of which we do not determine, but which have been determined for us. The life has its turns, and we can't control life. While we may have some sense of where we're going, the journey holds many surprises that may completely alter how we travel along our journey. That journey of life is not static, it's not perfect, it's not always knowable, but rather a movement from one point to another with all its twists and all its turns. But we join in this journey of life, of life from beginning to end, life that's already in progress. We join those who have gone before us. We join and we are all forging in this path of life where some of us discover there are dark valleys, there are problems, but there's also life, goodness, and refreshment. The tragedy again really shocks us, really hurts us, but then we see even from some of the victims' families that they're saying that we need you, I need you, we need you, I need you um, on this journey of life, that these were good people and that they loved others. And that we can't forget that the love that they had for one another, the love that they gave these victims, is part of life's journey as well too. That it unfolds in our tradition of being Christians and then in our journey that we, we, we take this journey throughout our whole life of learning, uh, listening, pondering, questioning, doubting, but we're not alone. God walks with us with our companions, our family, our friends, our prisoners, our neighbors, strangers, that we need each other. We need each other in this time of sadness, in this time of sorrow, in this time of Easter, which says that our journey it can be rich and can be a challenging time. But we need our companions. We need Jesus. Again, he walked with those uh, two people, a husband and wife, we believe. And he walked with them. He shared with them. And he said, we had hoped. He still walked with them. He still journeyed with them. He still helped them. They had a lot of surprises. Eventually, what their surprise was, what happened to them was, it was in the breaking of the bread when they finally saw this, it was Jesus. It was in the breaking the bread and the sacrament of receiving Jesus, which we can't now as a community, but we have that act of spiritual nourishment that we pray at communion time. So we can't receive now, but in the breaking the bread to come on our journey of life, when we gather again, we'll receive Jesus in the Eucharist, but we have Jesus in our prayer, in one another, in our life of good and bad. So may God bless you in this Easter season. May God watch over you and protect you. And in all the questioning we have of the Nova Scotia problem and the sad tragedy, may God walk with us. So I encourage you this week to spend some time reflecting on the resurrection, on the readings this week, and also maybe someone, a person or persons, which brought the message of the resurrection to you at your home, at work, or maybe on the news. So may God bless you today, knowing that I am praying for you and asking God to watch over us at this time. May God bless you all. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
we have walked with the disciples on the way to Emmaus. Now listen to the words of Christ. Now we turn to the one who was made known in the breaking of the bread to offer our prayers for those in need. That church leaders everywhere will walk with all who search for the living God, offering Christ peace and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that those who lead the nations of the world will walk in the ways of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that the victims of the Nova Scotia shooting this week will be at peace, and that their families will be comforted by our prayers. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer that today's gospel story will inspire us to become Christ for one another, as we walk together the road to new life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that the sick will know the healing power of the risen Christ, our families and our friends. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer, that those who have died will soon be welcomed into the peaceful kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You summon us to follow your Son, O God of goodness and peace. Hear our prayers, we seek his presence in those who suffer. Ease their pain and strengthen them. We ask this to the risen one, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the, the bread we offer you. Food of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Food of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings for your exultant church, and as you have given her cause, for such great and such gladness, grant us always in the gifts we bring a bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, claiming, O Lord, but in this time above all law, to laud you let more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the church of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And in the heavenly powers, the golden and angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your glory, 
the clean now together as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the for the gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ. At this time he was betrayed, and in willing his own passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, and for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and to bring in the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Belkis our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Saints, Saint Teresa, who pleased you throughout the ages, may be merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with them, in the God Almighty Father, all Glory and honor is yours, for you are forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, in form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, may we always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace ye grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us now, at this time of peace, now close our eyes. Let's pray for peace in our hearts. Let's pray for peace in our homes. Let's pray for peace in our country, of Canada. Let's pray for peace in our world. 
He's praying for peace where there is war or division or struggle or hatred. Lord God, make me a person of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter not into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you have were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries be attained in their faith and in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, be assured of my prayers for you and for your family at this time. We pray for one another. We pray especially for the people in Nova Scotia in this very shocking tragedy. And may God be with them in their time of need. We pray for them and ask for your prayers for them. Again, check out our website, our homepage uh, for masses and reflections and uh, information in the bulletin, which is new every week. May God bless you all, and thank you for being a part of this Mass. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.